the matter, Poochie? Does it hurt? Hey, what the hell are you doing? Having a bit of fun. What's it to you? Oh! Hey there, everybody. This is Ray from Classic Game Room. You know, it's not easy when you have a success like Fable to make a sequel for and try and replicate that success. That's what Lionhead Studios and Microsoft tried to do with Fable 2. Taking place 500 years after the original Fable, you start out as an orphan on the hard, cold streets of Albion's Bowerstone Alleys with only your sister's smile and your puppy's fur to keep you warm at night. One day, though, your luck seems to get drastically worse as Lord Lucian, the local governor, abducts you and your sister for use in his arcane magics as he tries to resurrect his long-dead wife and daughter. You race to save your sister, but fail and are cast out a window after being shot by Lucian. Unbeknownst to you, though, is that you are a descendant of the original hero of Oakvale from Fable 1, and Teresa, the original hero's sister and, pr and practitioner of her own dark magics, finds you, heals you, and then trains you for what will be the stuff of legends. Meanwhile, Lucian begins building a giant arcane spire, and only through your training and strength, and, or melee, skill, or firearms, or projectiles, and will, or magic, and by bringing together the heroes who specialize in these fighting forms, can you stop his evil plans and rescue all of Albion from oblivion? Fable 2 isn't necessarily better or worse than Fable 1, but it definitely is different. The first thing you'll notice is that due to the evolution of technology, your bow and arrows have been replaced for the most part with rudimentary firearms and that the overall landscape of Albion sees castles and brick towers off the horizon instead of the farmland and small villages that populated most of Fable 1. And there are a lot less villages to explore in Fable 2 as well compared to Fable 1. But the ones that there are are larger and have just as many creative characters who probably need your help one way or another as you level up in the classic RPG fashion. Another new feature to Fable 2 is that your hero can be a boy or a girl. Since 40% of the gaming market is female now, it only makes sense that the fairer sex is represented in a game where your choices are supposed to affect everything in the world around you. There's also the choice of whether your character can be hetero, homo, or bisexual. So maybe on the more lonely nights in the underwater base, I have my second female Fable 2 hero get a female hooker. So? So? I'm so hungry. Anyway, your choices do affect everything. From not only your outward appearance, but many times onto the lives of the NPCs and how you are portrayed by the townspeople you are supposed to be trying to rescue from Lucian's plot. Obviously, with the jump from Xbox to Xbox 360, the graphics are a hundred times better than Fable 1, and the voice acting and music, of course, has improved as well. The only real complaint that I, like many others, have had is the line in the sand, the trail of breadcrumbs, if you will, that is painted onto the landscape to point you in the direction of your next objective for whatever quest you may be on at that point. Look. That is where Lucian is now. It was a great idea in order for you not to get lost in such an expansive world as Fable 2, but it also made it very hard for you to just go explore the nooks and crannies that made this world so great because you just feel compelled to follow the damn golden trail. Aside from this though, if you're a fan of RPGs or a fan of fantasy worlds with a medieval feel, then Fable 2 is a game you should buy because the enthralling story and open-endedness of all the decisions you have to make will wet the whistle of anyone who loves a good old-fashioned RPG. And it has hookers. No one defies Thag the Impatient. I'll gut you myself. 